In this video, I'm going to go over all the steps to set up the demonstration application that we showed at the Couchbase Connect Silicon Valley 2017 keynote. There are quite a few pieces to this. Uh, you can find a lot more information about it in other blog posts, other videos, and the video from the keynote itself. The entire source for this project, including some demo data, is available on GitHub. You just clone the repo, and then we'll start by configuring the web client and server. The web client is based on Vue.js, but we use NPM for package management. So we'll go ahead and run NPM install in the client subdirectory. I've sped up the installation here. This will actually take longer in uh, real life. Uh, once that's done, you can just do an npm run build. This is building for production, which means that it's going to put some of the, the resulting files into the server static file directory. We switch over to the server side, run npm install there. Now, in addition to those packages, we need to configure some things for Urban Airship, particularly supply the Urban Airship keys, and set things like the cluster host and admin password and, and port and such. So all of that's done in this environment file. You can see all the parameters that need to be configured there. Once we have that in place, we can go ahead and start the node server. With the server up and running, we can go to the website and see that the front page of the dashboard is there, but the dashboard isn't really active because we haven't set up a Couchbase server on the back side yet. Now we'll go and walk through and do all the setup for Couchbase server. I'm running the beta build of 5.5, which is available for preview right now. I'll set the whole thing up from scratch. So there's some pretty straightforward things here, giving a cluster name, giving an admin account with and password, uh, accepting the terms for using Couchbase. I'm doing this all on my local machine, so I've just got it set to using localhost. Uh, I do want to push down the, the resource usage on it because I am running it on a machine while I'm recording this video. Uh, and I'm also going to enable the analytics service. So the analytics service is in developer preview. That's why you see the little marker there to warn you that it's not ready for production, but we will use it and demonstrate it in the, the application here. We save those parameters and complete. At this stage, these aren't really terribly specific to the demo, so you can find a lot of information elsewhere about how to configure these options. Now we need to add the buckets that we want for the application. The primary bucket is uh, named health. We also need a secondary bucket for eventing, and by default, it's going to look for a bucket named eventing, so I'm going to use that. Next, I'm going to create a user for role-based access control. I could give very fine-grained access to the bucket. In this case, for the ease of the demo, I actually just give admin privileges to everything. Uh, don't recommend doing that in production. You would probably typically want to, to set up different roles uh, with different control over various buckets and operations. The server REST endpoints use a number of nickel queries to get the data that they need. We haven't set up any of those indexes yet to support those queries. We don't want to use just a primary index that we want to use something that is going to be more efficient. So I'm setting up three indexes here to support the queries that are needed by the application. I'll be going into the details of those later on when I go into a fuller discussion of the code behind uh, this part of the application. So there we have our three indexes set up and ready to go. I use the eventing service to avoid having to pull the database. This is really cool in that we can use the eventing to monitor changes coming into the database and in effect, digest the data that's there and push out 
the data that's needed by the, the web client. So here I'm defining the function that will do that. And you can see, take a look at the code there and see what it is that I'm actually digesting down and pushing out using the curl capability in Nickel to actually call an endpoint on the, the web server uh, to supply that data and that feeds it through to the client. Once we've defined our function, we can go ahead and deploy that. And I'm going to have it start from and filter through all the documents in the database. We use the curl capability of Nickel in a couple of ways. One is to get geo information from the Google Maps API. The other is for the eventing notifications to the server when data has changed. So we need to, as a security measure, to control access with the curl function. And so we're going to set up the, the uh, accessible uh, URLs here. For the analytics service, you need to set up a kind of a, a mirror bucket that will ingest the data from the operational bucket directly. And then we want to also set up some indexes on that as well to make those queries efficient. So here I'm showing the creation of the shadow bucket, the creation of the three queries that we need, and then as a final step, you need to actually connect the uh, analytics bucket to the actual bucket that we're working with. I need to set up an index for the full text search the full text search index can be a little bit complicated. And so rather than trying to actually create it during the video, I do it from the command line by taking a prepackaged index description and sending it to the rest endpoint. So now we have a chance to walk through and see what the index looks like that we created. Uh, we have the name, the bucket that it's going to operate on, the type identifier. So we're going to identify the documents that we want to work on based on the JSON field type of resource type. One of the resource types that we have is a condition. One of the fields in there that we care about is the onset uh, date of that condition. And we want to index and store that, although uh, we won't actually be querying against it. I do want to have that information available. Full text search also supports facets. This is where you can drill down and group things uh, according to keywords and such. The condition records have a code subfield that is great for faceting. It's got unique codes for a number of diagnoses and things like that. Next comes the piece that shows the real meat of the full text search, where we're going to index the note field, a subfield of the note field, the text. So this would be the text entry that a doctor might add for notes about the condition. And that's where we would want to be doing some matching to try and, and uh, dig out some, some information uh, based on the entries there. The last thing we want to index out of the condition record is the patient reference. In this case, we're going to keep the entire patient reference and store it. So this gives us our way of once we've looked up a condition record of now finding our patient record. We'll set up a similar index for an encounter record. An encounter record in the fire specification is something uh, to document an encounter, an individual encounter with a patient, so like an office visit or something like this. We don't do much with the other settings here. See, we're not using any custom analyzers or custom filters. We do want, however, to set our default analyzer to English. So uh, the default analyzer is going to work better if it knows what language you're working in. So you'll typically want to adjust it to the, the language that you're expecting. And we've narrowed down what the information we want to index on. So we don't want to be storing dynamic properties because that will inflate the size of the index significantly.
This is a JSON representation of that full index. This is what you'll find in the configuration file that you can use to set up these indexes through the REST endpoint. You can take a look at the structure of it. Once you have set up an index and played with it a little bit, the mapping between that and what's in the, the JSON file should be pretty straightforward. We can't store the entire data that was used in the demo. It's, it was quite a large data set. I do have, however, have a small data set that's useful for seeing the full functionality of the demonstration available. This piece is showing how you would load that from the command line, import it into the database. A few important things to see here are how you specify the files that you want, how we're going to generate the IDs for them, and then this style of listing of the data, uh, line style, you can find explanations for that in the Couchbase documentation and see the example from the example data. And once we get that going and loaded up, you can see that we've got about a little over 50,000 records in here. And once we have that data in there, we can go back to the web application and see now that we're actually getting some live responses from the database. That includes we've set up our full text index, so you can see that the full text search is working. And we've also set up our analytics, so we can show a bit of the analytics working. This is a small data set, so it's not really what the analytics is targeted to, and that's why you're not really seeing uh, the nice big graphs that we got in the demo. But it's enough to see how all this is working. With Couchbase Server configured, now we want to move on to the mobile aspect of this. The first thing we're going to do is start up our Sync Gateway. When you first start up Sync Gateway, it's going to go through and import uh, the existing documents in the database if it's the first time running it. There are ways to filter this down to speed up that process, which I don't show here. Otherwise, you can see that starting Sync Gateway is, is straightforward. I show the example configuration file, what I use for the demo. The Android application that we wrote for the demo has a number of things to configure. Here I'm setting it up so that the replication can happen when running on the emulator. I'll show a version running uh, with the emulator. We also need to set up the parameters for urban airship notifications. The application was designed to flexibly allow for different types of collecting devices. In this case, since I want to run on the emulator, I don't want to be dependent on the hardware patch, but I actually want to use a software input for temperature. You can figure that using this one resource file. I'll switch it here from using the hardware patch to using a soft entry directly on the device so that this can be run with the emulator. Recall I'm running all of this locally on one machine, so in order to have the device talk to Sync Gateway, I need to set up a reverse mapping. Now with all of that in place, we're ready to go ahead and run the Android application on the emulator. We can see here that we've got nothing showing, no temperature readings have been taken yet. I'm going to use the soft entry to uh, add some readings and we'll see via the eventing service that those get pushed out to the client. I'll add a couple more temperatures, one here to show the triggering. If you'll notice that the alert up there uh, was showing nothing and now is triggered on a high temperature. And just to make the graph look nice, I'll add a couple other temperatures in there. That concludes the setup for the demo application. You can see that even having sped up some pieces of this, there's quite a bit to it, and it takes a fair amount uh, of time to get the whole thing going. I'll try to have this all set up in chapters so that you can jump around to the specific pieces that you want to look at and see how the configuration is done. With that, I'll direct you back to a number of other resources. I have other videos that I've made and we'll be making more around this demo. There's the project code itself, there's the video of the demo from the Couchbase Connect conference, 
and there'll be blog posts and of course all of the Couchbase documentation and feel free to come and ask questions on our forums. You can also reach me directly. I monitor the forums. I'm also available on Twitter and I'll put some of these links in show notes and you can find them in my blog posts as well. Thanks for joining.